So uh, the Performance Center down in Orlando, uh, y'all are cranking out cats. Uh, how many cats are down there at a specific uh, time? They got football players, athletes, uh, people think, off the street. Uh, I think they got about seventy to a hundred uh, a lot. current current superstars in training down there. Superstars but, in training. Uh, but the purpose is to have a lot. And yeah, I damn think, right, because uh, you got to weed through those cats. You do, and uh, the purpose of building the performance center was to um, attract more superstars yeah. to WWE. Yeah. Because uh, back in the day, it was easy. Yeah. You go to a territory. I like this guy. He's yeah. coming to play for us. I like this guy. He's coming yeah. to play for there us. There was a training ground. There, there was a places for the, there were places for them to get their chops. By the way, by the time they got to New York, the they show. would already be seasoned. Yes. And the system just kept on moving. Now. Um, with the fall of WCW, uh, it was about 15 years ago, maybe. Yeah, it, we have hit the point where we can no longer draw. We can no longer pick from certain right. promotions or even the competition. We have to develop our own. So we're now in that point of being um, just open. Like this is where you go to train. By the way, it's just as good as any Division One college facility. You'll get all the you know you'll get everything you need to be ready for. WWE on the road. I think it's a fantastic move. The facility is beautiful. The TV facility is beautiful. If you can't make it there, you just don't have it. <laughs> That's, that should be the slogan of the place. But WWE Performance Center. If you can't make it here, you just weren't meant for it. But you know, the, the, the thing about it, I mean, it's a uh, it was a great move by WWE to, I think to so. do this. I, I mean, because so. you must yes. to survive. Yeah. If you cannot rely on on the indie scene out there. And some of these cats, and you know, and whatever for, kind of training they've had, it, man, it's 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 about being and self sufficient. Forever, forever, Vince has been so good at adapting, and that's uh, I truly admire that about him. He uh, he has such foresight and his ability to adapt to stuff that I would never even think about. Uh, that is such an admirable trait, and I think he's just ahead of the curve once again. Like, okay, we have to advertise this, we have to make it the the big deal. Right. NXT is going to go on the network. Like I said, those guys who are in their infancy are now going to have opportunity in front of the world. Like that's, I remember wrestling in Danny Davis's gym in uh, OVW Kentucky in front of 50 people. And that was yeah. our TV broadcast. Yeah. You know, we do Sunday shows in, in front of 12 people. Yeah. And that was a little, a little booth in a brick building with no bathroom. Uh, but it was awesome. You yeah. know, but times have, times have changed. I could, you know, I could say, well, back in my day, this and back in my day, that yeah. I loved those times, but I would also love to have the luxuries they have in the performance center now. Right. Hey, when you look at uh, you know, where you're at right now, we're sitting on a badass tour bus, and uh, you, you've made well for yourself. You, you, you like I said, you, you're just putting together one of the best runs in the history of the business, and I'm so proud of you. But when you go back and talk about those old OVW days, oh, and a little old dark, uh, you know, piece of junk uh, facility, 50 cats in the audience. I mean, what, those were probably some of the best moments you've ever had in your I, life. Uh... I, I don't talk to Nick Dinsmore enough, but Nick and I were, were real close in those uh, early years and, and stayed close for a while afterwards. And we always refer to that time as Camelot because it was. Right. I mean, you, you know, you, you slept in your own bed every night. You were driving from town to town, and it was all through Kentuckiana and down in Tennessee a little bit. And it was just, um, it was just a lot, a lot simpler. You know, you were you were learning the business. You were kind of finding your way. We had great mentors in Danny Davis right. and Jim Cornette, so we had a good like a good minds around us. Right. Uh, I was, un, I was in an unbelievable class of talent. Me, Dave Batista, Randy Orton, Brock Lesnar, Shelton Benjamin, Ron Waterman, Brian Keck, like um, Sylvester Turkai, just a, a a group of like superheroes. So. Yeah. Uh, and we had a great group of Kentucky kids who were unbelievable in the ring and knew how to work, and they made us all look better than we were, and yeah. we were very grateful for that. And it was just uh, it was a great time. It, w it was a great time.